scientists from the building research establishment, in collaboration with the cement industry, began a 25-year concrete trial at Northwick Park in Middlesex. The object, to see how different concrete mixes perform when exposed to high levels of sulfate salts in the soil. Several types of concrete, made with both ordinary Portland and sulfate-resisting cements, were to be exposed in a number of different ways. To test precast concrete, about a thousand 150 millimeter diameter cylinders were made in the laboratory. Some fully compacted and some only partly compacted. Five cylinders, all of the same mix, were lowered into each of a number of three meter deep holes using a suction pad. To test cast in situ concrete, very high workability mixes such as those used in piling were simply tipped down some of the holes without additional compaction. Another method of exposure involved the construction of this rectangular chamber. Seven and a half meters long, two meters wide, and three meters high. After construction, the chamber was covered and the land re-turfed. The area is divided into three plots, each containing one-third of the test specimens for excavation after five, 15, and 25 years. And in 1975, extraction of the first samples was carried out. In the chamber, cores were taken from the walls and floor by drilling through the 250 millimeter thick concrete and into the clay behind it. What you've just seen is about a minute and a half with nothing removed of what it must have been like for anyone still in the building after the fire was seen above seat level. Remember that the smoke and flames coming out of the test rig were from contents which were only a fraction of those in the original fire and they would have been contained inside, making conditions even worse. Samples of gases taken at nose height inside the rig showed that death would have been very swift and even diluted by ten times as they might have been further away from the fire, they were still highly dangerous. Events happened so fast that we need to look at the film in slow motion to fully appreciate it. But it's all there to see. The spread of flame across the wall. Then the spontaneous ignition of other seats as the fire leapt forward. But it wasn't only fast. This investigation showed that its mechanism was very complex. Standard tests alone could never have established what happened because there were interactions between all the various components. A comprehensive look at these interactions was only possible by using the wide range of expertise at the fire research station, their facilities for small and large scale experiments, and their vast pool of knowledge from past research. Well, there we have it. All the tests we've seen, as well as many more, are described in this report, which has been presented as evidence at the Tribunal of Inquiry. There were experiments on every material present in the original fire and many different combinations of materials and components, some 50-odd tests altogether. 
Time prevents us from viewing everyone, so what we've seen are the ones which have pointed the way through the story. The report tells of a long and thorough investigation into just one of the many such tragic fires which the scientists at the fire research station are concerned with. This particular jigsaw puzzle is complete. But there's one thing you can be sure of. Sadly, there will be others. In the United Kingdom, buildings, offices, superstores, dwellings, contribute about half of the total carbon dioxide emissions, and this leads to a number of environmental problems. CO2 is partly responsible for the so-called greenhouse effect, which is predicted to cause global warming and flooding of large areas of our planet. Global warming could lead to an increase in the demand for refrigeration and air conditioning systems. Refrigerants are one of the sources of chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, which in turn damage the ozone layer. There is acid rain burning the trees, poisoning lakes, scarring the land. Poorly maintained facilities can create unhealthy living or working conditions. Buildings probably have a greater impact on our environment than any other human activity. We, the designers, the builders, the users, have to create cleaner, healthier, friendlier buildings if we are to help protect the quality of our lives. As well as for a range of new buildings, Bream is now available in a version for existing office buildings. Offices could be empty and awaiting a new tenant. The management may wish to improve internal environmental conditions. Refurbishment of a building or its services could be planned, or an objective statement of environmental performance might be required. These are all opportunities to carry out an environmental assessment. The building research station was in Long Drive, East Acton. So I travelled up to East Acton station and uh, took my way to the building research station, which then was just a collection of army huts. We were studying the properties of cement and the testing of cement, that was another thing. There was a lot of building going on and some control had to be made on the on port and cement, its properties. So we made test specimens for measuring the strength and compression and tension and so on. The work developed, it increased, we got more active. We took on extra staff, took on chemists and analysts, all the, it, was a, it became a research establishment. 